Okay, so now we're going to use a stereo net to figure out what the true strike and dip is of this particular surface that is defined by uh, trends and plunges of the edges of this box, which in this case is 57 degrees as the trend line, the azimuth line, and a 30 degree plunge, so the distance or the, uh, the angle between horizontal uh, and the edge of the box. And then over on this side, we have a 334 degree uh, azimuth of the trend line, uh, and the plunge is about 37 degrees. Uh, and so we can use the stereo net to figure out uh, what uh, plane those uh, lineations, in this case the edge of the box, fit into. And in theory, we could take the measurements of these other uh, as or these other um, trend and plunge lines, these other lineations, and they should fall in the same plane. Okay, hi everybody, we're back again. So we're going to use a stereo net to take these two measurements of trend and plunge and figure out what the true strike and dip is um, of the plane in which both of those uh, trend and plunge measurements occur, those lineations occurred. And what I've done is I have marked, there's my stereo net there, I've taken a piece of tissue paper and I've marked the various angles uh, from north, 10, 20, 30 degrees, and so forth, to the equator, southern hemisphere, uh, and then also the west direction. Um, and you can use a thumbtack uh, that comes through the back of the stereo net uh, to help to rotate the uh, paper here, but you can also use like a um, device like this, where we can just hold it in the center, and then this can freely rotate um, around that. So now the key thing is to mark these trends and plunges. The trend is, is of course, uh, we're thinking about lines that are dipping into what you can imagine as being a bowl here. Um, and so the 57 degree trend is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and then 57 degrees, these are in two, so two, four, six, and then right about, actually it's not aligned properly. Get it going. Okay, so two, four, six, seven, right here. Okay, so that's a 57 degree um, uh, mark, and we have to now figure out where that line plots out here on the stereo net. And so to do that, we hold the, uh, paper down and we can rotate this around so that that 57 degree mark is now on one of the so-called primitive lines, in this case the east-west line, um, and we can count in 30 degrees uh, with these heavy lines being the uh, uh, 10, 10 degree increments. So it's 10, 20, 30 degrees. There is our mark uh, for 30 degrees. So now when we return this up to north, you can see this is effectively, you can imagine this being like a, a line that is dipping into the uh, interior of a bowl, and this is the intersection point where that hits the edge of the bowl. Um, okay, so now we have another uh, trend and plunge line as well. Uh, so 334 degrees. Uh, we can figure out where that intersects the edge of this. Here's 330 degrees, for example. So 334 is right here. Okay, and again, to figure out the where the uh, plunge is, that's 37 degrees, we rotate this around uh, until that line is on uh, the east-west line, and then count in from the edge, because this is zero degrees, 10, 20, 30, and then these are two, so two, four, six right here. So that is a that is the measurement of the 334 and 37 degree uh, line. So we have two different points, both representing lines that are dipping into the planes like that. Um, and they have to lie on uh, the, the plane that ha is a true strike and dip. And so to figure out what the true strike and dip is, um, we rotate uh, this around until these two points lie on the same great circle. And the great circle are these heavy lines that run between north and south. Uh, and so we can rotate this around looking for the point at which they are sitting right next to, in this case, this heavy uh, line here, which is about 40 degrees. Uh, and so that is defining our great circle. And we can just now trace that through. 
okay? And then all the way over here uh, to the, to one of the poles, and then this one can come around as well. Okay, and there is the polar position. So that line that I just drew defines a plane that is dipping into the stereo net like this and intersecting the bottom of the bowl. Uh, and so to figure out what the uh, strike and dip of that line is, uh, we already have these aligned at the north-south uh, directions, so we can count in from the equator to that line to figure out what the dip is. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40. Looks like it's about 42 degrees uh, is the dip of that plane that has these two uh, apparent dips, these two lineations in the surface of it. Um, to figure out the strike, uh, we rotate this back around uh, until the, um, we're back in the original north-south orientation. Uh, and then we look to see where this, um, this line intersects the edge of the stereo net. And very importantly, we're doing what's called the right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule is the strike in the direction where a dip is off uh, to the right side, okay? In this case, uh, my right hand, the dip is like that. And so this is the, we're gonna look at that end as opposed to that end in order to maintain the right-hand rule. And so this is 270, two, three, oh, I don't know, it's probably just like about 276 approximately, uh, if I have everything aligned properly. Um, and so the key point is 276 and 42 are our measurements, uh, 276 degrees and 42 degrees uh, are our estimates of the true uh, strike and dip of that plane that contains those two lineations. Now I should warn you that little errors creep into this. Uh, if you did this again, or if you used a calculator, you might get slightly different numbers than this um, because this is a graphical approach. <laughs> uh, and it depends very much upon where you put your tick marks and how accurate they are and things like that. But the key point about this is that the, um, the true strike and dip will always have a larger dip than the apparent. Uh, uh, in this case, trends and plunges of lines that lie in that plane. And that's because the true strike and dip uh, has the maximum dip uh, is, is being recorded there uh, for that particular plane, whereas the, um, the trends and plunge of these lineations don't have to be following directly uh, the maximum dip uh, as, they, um, as they intersect uh, that particular uh, plane. Okay, so that's how you measure the true strike and dip from apparent dips like a trend and plunge. Uh, and just remember that those, all those trend lines have to lie uh, on the same great circle.